Evening, folks. Hope all is going well with you. Hope everything's going well. There is a poll up on the community page of our channel. Uh, we are down to two games, Rome Remastered 2, Rome Total War Remastered 2, which I can put my, my classical knowledge behind if you want to want me to talk about ancient history and stuff, but can do that. And on the flip side, we have Rogue Trader, which is currently downloading, so we'll be waiting about five to ten minutes to start that one. But it's up to you. Head on over to the page. I'll put it in the, in the description, actually, not the description, the chat. I'll whack it on there. And uh, we'll have some fun. There we go. Rogue Trader's currently winning. Um, I, I think it will win, to be honest with you, because it won the initial vote, so I'm guessing uh, people are going to want to play that. <clears throat> I have played Rogue Trader a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. I've, I've played it about 20, 20 30 hours. Um, my original character was a Commissar. So the only character I don't want you creating with me tonight is a Commissar. Because I've already done an Imperial Guard Commissar who's loyal to the Imperium. So, I don't mind being loyal to the Imperium. I don't mind not being loyal to the Imperium. That is up to you. But, um, in terms of being a Commissar, I'm not going to do that again. Or have that uh, background. Because my own character has that background. And this might be something that we do on a Monday and Tuesday for good, if we like. If we like, uh, like Road Trader and like doing it together, then we'll, we'll carry on doing it. It'll be good for everyone's mental health, I think. Oh, Rome Total War's got some uh, some fans. Good, good, good. I, I do love me Rome, Rome, uh, Rome 1. I think it's brilliant. And I will download it because when we do these streams... We may take a break from the game that we're currently playing at the moment. It looks like we're going to be playing Rogue Trader, but we'll see. We'll see. I think I'll, I'll cut off things in about two minutes. But it looks like we're going to be playing Rogue Trader, which is fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, we will have a look, Jim Jitsu, in a minute. We're going to go on the game together, and, and if, if it wins, we'll go on the game together and we'll have a little look at what other things you can choose. Um, just so you know, guys, this is a chill stream. Where I'm chilling out, sitting around with you, you know, d having some banter, going back and forth. So I'm not going to be dedicating all my brain power to the game, so I will be playing it on easy. Just so you know, if that's offending you somehow, that you're offended somebody is playing a game on easy, uh, number one, I suggest you go outside and touch some grass and check your priorities. And number two, you don't have to be here. You know, you can, you can go elsewhere. This, it, I'm, I'm not forcing you to stay here. Um, on the flip side, if you like the stream, and you're having fun, then make sure at 7 o'clock, you, you, you can start donating. Now, uh, please don't give any money before 7 o'clock, because that is when my fundraiser starts on this video. So please don't, don't give me any money, because um, I, I, I don't want it. <laughs> For now, I'm fine, thank you. Um... So please hold off until 7 o'clock if that's what you're going to do. If you've got some extra pennies and you're thinking, oh, I'll give it to North. Well, don't. Wait until 7 o'clock. And uh, that is when our fundraiser will start. And all money then will be going towards Movember. That is male health and suicide prevention imperative that is going on right now. Uh, we've raised so far $1,266, which is pretty awesome. I'm pretty proud of everybody uh, on our... That's over the past um, year of our streams we, we, we've we've got that much going on so i'm very happy with that it's good good stuff good stuff
make an Iconoclast Jakero. I wish you could make a Jakero Weaponsmith. That'd be pretty cool. I always really loved the rules back in the uh, in, in the old Grey Knight Codex of, of the Jakero when you'd give him your weapon and it was like a random, random thing what he'd do to it. He might spit on it or he might actually give you, you know, a las gun, a las cannon, sorry, and give it back to you. Be like, there you go. Uh, free las cannon. Right, I'm calling it there, so it will be Rogue Trader that, that we're playing, so feel free not to vote anymore. Have you had a good day? I have had a good day, thank you, yes, I have had a good day. Um, average, really, average. Yeah, Michigan. Um, the problem with that, my friend, um, uh, and you will be appeased by this answer, I've played Helldivers to death. So I I'm literally sick of it. <laughs> like, I've played it so much. Probably my game of the year so right now, um, if I'm going to be honest. Well, very close to being, anyway. Right, the uh, download is at 100%. We're just waiting for verification now, and we'll be ready to go. <clears throat> what would I be in 40k if it wasn't so grim dark? Well, then I wouldn't be in 40k. Right? I wouldn't mean 40k. If, if it wasn't as so grim dark. You know? I'm going to change the stream title now to, to Rogue Trader since that's what we're playing. So I'll get on there and have some fun. There we go. If you refresh the stream, you don't have to. You'll now see Rogue Trader Night 1 on there, which is nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, Rogue Trader won the vote. Uh, commiserations to uh, Rome 1. It is one of my favourite games, so we will get to that eventually. And there we go. You've just heard the sound of Rogue Trader beginning. And now it's downloading the cloud files, and there we go. All done. Get the game started, shall we? It is an RPG, Grey Knight. Yes. Yes, it is. A very good RPG. Well, I'm, I'm very happy that it's been balanced because there were certain things going on in the game last time that weren't great. So, uh, Rogue Trader. Rogue Trader. Stream. That was my PC, guys, so please don't um, think it's yours. There we go. Excellent. We are on. We are away. We are away. Lovely stuff. I'm not using a gamepad. Sod off. Right, so, um, I was playing as... I'll, I'll show you my, my character, actually. My old character. Why not? You guys are going to decide this character, by the way. I'm not going to put much brain power into it because I am talking to you on the, on the, on the chat. So we're playing this game together. So you're going to decide on the character. And you're going to decide where we're from and what we're doing. And we'll do that. What time are we on now? Yeah, you can now donate, and if you do donate, it will be going towards uh, Male Mental Health. It'll be it'll be going towards our fundraiser, so it's not going to me. Um, here is my guy and his lovely, lovely moustache. I basically tried to create Doctor Disrespect if he was in if he was in 40k. I mean, you know, his name's Gallus. He was a or he is a, a Thunderhammer wielding commissar 
of the Imperium. I mean, good God, look at this mensch. Look at this guy. Right? So, you know, very, 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 very happy with him. Um, back to your question before, though, what would I be in 40k? I would actually be... Um, probably an Inquisitor. Yeah, pr probably a, 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 an Interrogator. So on my way to being an Inquisitor. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty awesome. I'd, li I'd like that. Especially in a less grim dark setting, because it wouldn't, wouldn't cost too much. But yeah, he has a Thunder Hammer. Um, he puts the hammer down. He's just awesome. I, I, I love Gallus. And I'll be playing him again... Uh, momentarily. We are quite the way through the game at this point now, because I've already got my ship and all that sort of stuff. And I've already I'm already on the, the, the wide part of the game. So we'll go back to the main menu and we will make our own character and we'll start again. So I'm going to go back to the chat and just uh, have a little word with, with people. Make sure you're all doing well. I'm sorry about that, Cryptic, mate. Sorry you had to break up. Uh, they are the worst. One thing I will tell you from experience, and you're not going to like this. You know, it's not really something that you're going you're gonna to get a lot out of, mentally, I suppose. But it does get better. I know people say that to you all the time, but it's true. It does get better. It genuinely does get better. Time is a great healer. Um, Hellcat says, I say less grim dark in my question as I feel it being pure 40k could a, could affect your choice. Instead, lock in marine or lord. No, no, no. I, I, I think I, even if it was full 40k, I'd go with I'd go with um, Inquis Inquisition as well. You know. Yeah. So now Michigan. Yeah, you're allowed to now. You're okay. I wouldn't want to be a grey knight. I, I think people. People say that all the time. They're like, oh, well, well, why wouldn't you be a Grey Well, there's a loads of reasons why you wouldn't want to be a Grey Knight. Jesus, like, it would be an awful way to live. <laughs> just as this stoic monk who just kills demons and does nothing else with his life and lich spends his entire life in prayer. You know, in training or prayer. And, and unlike the Custodes, who got to sit around an Imperial Palace for 10,000 years... You're out there in the worst of it, fighting the worst that there is. The worst that the arch enemy has to throw at you. That would suck. I'd hate that. That sucks. You know? Yeah, Hector Rex. Yeah, cool. I like him. I like him. Right. Yeah, exactly. PP no work either. Well, actually, no, Games Workshop, as, as, as the as Flash Kits have told us, Games Workshop uh, never really gave us any you know, inclination of whether that worked or not. So, you know, you never know. You never know. Um. Alrighty. So, Rogue Trader, let's go. And as I said before, um, I really like it when devs do this, where they say, look, uh, they're letting you underneath the curtain. So they say, you know, we as developers are always striving to improve our work. To do this, we need some information, blah, blah, blah. I don't mind. Yes, you can have me information. No problem. So, um, we'll continue that at, to difficulty. So, as I said before, we're going to be playing on story because this stream is not about me, my, my, my own game. I like to play on daring, right, rather than normal. I, I'd, I'd like to play on daring. Uh, I don't do any of the harder difficulties because that's just ridiculous. Uh, I, I, I like, I like uh, not having a headache. So, but in this stream, I want to do story because I want to go, to, I want to look at the chat, I want to chill out, I want to see the story. I want us to have a good time, all right? So we're going to go with story, and let's go with this. I think you can, I think you can change it at any time, anyway. But we'll continue because we're on story, right? So these are your standard characters that you can have. Um, weirdly, I created a guy who's kind of like this. In fact, I think this is kind of my guy. But I'd like to create a, a combat character. I've noticed that combat, close combat, seems to be much more overpowered in the early going. In the early game. You know? Much more. So, I guess I'll do a custom character. And, alright. I'm going to do a male. Alright, I'm going to create a male. 
because I think the male, ro the female romance options are better. So, you know, if we, if we do that later on, you will also choose that. And uh, I think they are better later on. So, um, um, I guess we'll go for uh, maybe this guy. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, this guy looks cool. That look at him. Hmm. Anyway. Um... Okay, all this stuff we can do late, later, okay? So, alright. What kind of a world are we from? Throw it in the chat. Are we from a death world? Which is, you know, Katachan kind of a place. Sort of like a, a place where, like, where even the plants are trying to eat you. Were we born in space? Alright, were we born out there on a ship? We're used to zero G, low gravity. Were we born on a hive world, which is a city world? Big old massive city world. Were we born on a forge world? Which is, again, if, you, uh, if you're if you Adeptus Mechanicus, you're a fan of them, you'll, you'll know who they are. Or, we were born on an Imperial world, which is a normal world, um, which has cities on it. Can be of any level, really. It might be from a feudal world or something like that. Or a fortress world, which is like Cadia. And Cadia is very much so a, uh, a fortress world of holding back the enemy. Uh, forge, forge. Voidborn. He does, Jimmy Fied. A A Abelard is the one guy who made me think, oh, Jesus Christ, Abelard, calm down. I want to get some, um, I want to get some shit too. Uh, Krieg is Fortress. So I could be from Krieg. Fortress, two for Fortress. Terra would be an Imperial world. Um, so two for each now. Voidborn, uh, Fortress, and... Uh, forge. If anyone else wants to do anything, let me know, and uh, I will I will select it in a minute, unless we get another one. Forge world for that sweet toughness buff. Yeah, you do get good toughness from it. Imperial world, what do you get from that? <clears throat> You don't get any buffs, you just get talents? Okay. Fortress world... Willpower, perception. Pleasure planet. Alright. I think we've got one... Two... Three void world... Void born. Uh, one... Two... One, two, four, Forge World. One, two, four, Fortress World. Um, I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of torn. Because I, I've... Uh... None of these really matter because we're on, we're on lower difficulty. So we can pretty much do what we want. Um, which is another reason why I wanted to do it this way. Because, you know... Voidborn is the way. Why? Strength minus five. I wanted to go with combat. Voidborn, if you're going to be a mage, if you're going to be a psyker, yeah. Willpower and intelligence, yeah, definitely. But, um, Voidborn doesn't really make that much sense for what we want to do. Right, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to do, um, <clears throat> okay, everyone's seen Voidborn, so that's what we're doing. We're going Voidborn. Voidborn came in with a lot. So we got Jinx, Be Smart. Just a Flesh Wound. Bloody Mess. Contagious Luck. Okay, cool. Got Minus to Strength, which is a fucking ball ache, but it doesn't matter. Um, origin. What are we? We cannot be a Commissar. We can't be a Commissar. Alright. So you tell me. What are we? We can't be a Commissar. I've already got a Commissar. So we can be... An Imperial, an Astro Militarum Commander. So we're just a normal commander. We can be a Crime Lord. That'd work. Ah, oh, look at his jacket. Dude, look at that jacket. That looks epic. A Priest. 
A Navy officer? Oh shit, look at that. This is like oh this is like John Blanche 40k rather than modern 40k and I and I'm and I really like it. I really really like it. Um a noble of a what that's cool. That's cool. He's killed this like this creature and just thrown it on his back. I like that. That's cool. Or a sanctioned psyker. Okay. What are we? What are we? We've got one for priest. Fightery psyker. Noble officer psyker. Crime lord, crime lord. A crime lord. Navy officer. Naval officer or noble. Crime lord, noble. Okay, so we got we got noble or crime lord, I think, is what people are settling on. And a lot of people are liking a psyker who is who is um able to fight in combat, right? A lot of you guys are, are going that way. Okay. Well, I guess we could be a crime lord who is also a sanctioned psyker, can we not? Or do we have do we have to select this now? And we and if we don't select sanctioned psyker, we can't be a psyker at all. Is that it? <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how that works. So let me know. If we if we select psyker now, can we? Uh, sorry, if we if we select no, um, what we what did you want? Crime Lord, can we be a psyker, or or are we locked into only selecting sanctioned psyker and that's it? I love his fucking jacket though, dude. Look at that. Look at the drip. That's what I mean, Takeda. That's what I mean, mate. Yeah, yeah. Do you need to start as a psyker to be a psyker, or can you be a psyker, but one of the other things? You know what I mean. But just not as powerful. Because this guy's got a rating as well. Um, this character is a psyker, albeit quite a weak one. I'm guessing that goes up as you go, right? Because psyker was... It was psyker or crime lord, wasn't it, that we were having? Um, and Jim Jitsu really wants me to be a priest with, like, a big hammer. That's true. That's true. That would be kind of cool. Noble Psyker. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we've got like, I think there's four now who wanted Psyker. Um, and Crime Lord. So I'm guessing we'll go with Psyker. Everyone happy with Psyker? Uh, it just means that we'll be going up in, in ratings as we go, really. And uh, we're getting the Psy ratings as we go up, making everything more powerful. Um, and I don't really do magic in these games. That's also a, That's also a thing. Crime Lord, definitely, I'd be that at one stage, yeah, but I've, I don't, I think, uh, I'm not really one for magic, so I've never really done it before. So, yeah, we'll go with that. All right, Sanction Psyker. Um, Homeworld, we, we did Voidborn, didn't we? Appearance, I quite like that appearance, I think that's fine. But he's not really Psyker-ish, so I'm going to change that a little bit. I really like the fact that they've got player models for the things that you choose. I think that's cool. I like that. Like it's not so you're not just sitting there twiddling your thumbs going, well hang on a minute, like like See if I select this guy and I go sanction psyker, now he's changed, see? Now he's actually changed in, in how he looks. Yeah, I like him. Okay, we'll go we'll go with that. So um what kind of a psyker are we gonna be? Right. So we've got biomancy, which is generally uh, buffing yourself. And upgrading yourself and, and others around you. Uh, just saying, you know, here's some more toughness. Here's some of that. We've got Diviner or Div or, or, or Divinia is another way to say it. And other fantasy settings. In that, so that's like reading the future, I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, what's it called in the game? It's called... Um, it's not called Diviner. It's called uh, Prescience, right? Prescience. You, 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 you cast Prescience. And you're able to see into the future and give people really good saves. So I guess this is that's what this is for. Is to give people luck and saving throws and things. Pyromancer. I'm already thinking Pyromancer. Um, 
because, you know, we've got a Master of the Flame. We, we were able to, to burn things, burn heretics and stuff, even though we kind of are one. We've got Sanctic, and Sanctic is essentially channeling the Emperor. And if you go bad, it's channeling demonic energies too. Uh, but most of the Grey Knights, for instance, have Sanctic uh, psychic powers. And we have Telepath, which is essentially going into people's brains and, and messing things up and doing all that kind of stuff. So what kind of a, of a Psyker do you want to do? I'm leaning towards either Sanctic or Pyromancer. That's what I'm leaning towards, but uh, I, I'm adhering to what you guys want, so you tell me what you want to do. I love orchestrate flames. It's like he's doing like an orchestra. Flames for everyone. Backdraft. We can do custom character. Oh, no, yeah, we can, but I'm not going to do them now. Cause it's, gonna, it's just going to take too long, man. We'll be here all night. It would Jim Jitsu, but we're playing it on... We're playing it on um, story mode, so it doesn't really matter. We can do we can do what we want. <clears throat> plus te ten plus four times the psychers in strength. Oh my god, that's really good. That's really good. Can he cast that on himself? Is he able to cast that on himself? Metabolic overcharge. Sanguine siphon. Oh, I'm changing my mind, you know. I'm changing my mind. I think we're going either Pyromancer or Biomancer, to be honest with you. Um... Hmm. Biomancer is, is the same archetype as Henrix. Okay. 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 I'm thinking we might might go with Biomancer. I know people are saying Pyromancer too. But for the character that we're building, I think what I'll do, when people are kind of torn 50-50 on what to do, right, I'll make... A decision on the kind of character that we're building. So we, we, we wanted to build, you guys said at the start, a, a, a Psyker who is able to punch in combat, right? Punchy combat Psyker. Um, so if we've got 50-50 Pyromancer and Biomancer, I would go with Biomancer because that leans into your our original archetype, right? You can cast it on yourself. Good. Alright, well, we'll go with Biomancer then. Because... As much as I want to do Pyromancer, um, you know, having two Henriks is never never bad because Henrik was really good when I when I was in my time. So our triumph, what is that? Well, whatever it is, it's going to have to be. Oh, I never mind. Upon solving, the, so a triumph is basically what what have we done really well? What have we done really well in our past? So apex of brilliance. Upon solving the mystery of a powerful, psychically active Xeno artifact. You managed to destroy the co the creation of countless enemies of humanity. That would give us Law Xenos. Not that imperative that we get that, but it, it's fine. It's fine. We have Illustrious Glory. You single-handedly saved a pilgrim ship by stopping a warp breach while traveling through the Immaterium. That seems a lot more like us. That does seem a lot more like us. Um, Feet of Greatness. The power of your sorcery. Crushed a demon of the arch enemy and drew it back to the warp. So, uh, we are doing one of the latter two. Right? Are we demon killing or are we closing warp rifts? What are we doing? What are we doing? You can take Paramancy later. Brilliant. Excellent stuff. So, are we doing illustrious glory or feat of greatness? <clears throat> 
Again, this is your character too. So I can't make... I've made one or two decisions, but most of these have been yours, which is nice. Oh, colour scheme. Go blue. Gonna change his hair. That's fine, though. Illustrious Glory has two votes. <clears throat> punch the warp. Okay. Um, punch the warp, punch the warp, closing rift. Okay, we're going with the demon then. But we, we, we punched a... That means, actually, if we do go down the chaos route... Punching a demon would work because it means we were kind of corrupted by the demon's touch when we when we when we went in there and started crunching heads, right? So we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Darkest hour. So grim portents. You were accused of being possessed. That fits so well. You were you were accused of being possessed by a warp entity and forced into exile, leaving your soul forever scarred. That sounds like us, right? That sounds like what we what we've been talking about. We've got a brand of shame. Your sorcery caused a warp manifestation aboard a void ship, claiming thousands of lives to end in the end. Maybe, maybe. Shadow of Torment, a an error of the sanctioning process, brought you many hours of agony, which nearly cost you your life. No, we're going Grim Portents, I think. That it, that is for us. And I'm making a, an executive decision there, because it fits too well. It fits far too well. Archetypes. We will be a warrior, because we've said that's what we're going to be. That's what we will do. Um... So we, we want to be up front, we want to charge, endure, daring breach, we want to do all that sort of stuff. Big smashy. Big smashy psyker. Um, yep. We are a warrior, indeed. Characteristics. So, uh, we're going to want... We are going to want um, weapon skill because we're we're going to be punchy. We're going to want toughness. We've already got, which is good. Intelligence we've already got, which is good, and willpower is at max. So we'll go with um, we'll go with some yes i think strength we're gonna have to put some pips into and we'll go with toughness as well so we're gonna be able to survive in combat which is great i like that that's good that's good in fact i'll probably put another pip in there just to make sure <clears throat> all right so we've got weapon skill which is good we needed that we got strength which is good we needed that too We've maxed out toughness. Intelligence is good. Willpower is good. Alright. Void ship. Sword class frigate. Uh, let's call it the exile, shall we? There we go. Sword class frigate. Classic void ship design. Okay. Proven in thousands of battles, combining decent firepower, high speed, and respectable survivability. Essentially, it's a edge standard ship. Alrighty. So can we not change his hair colour? Show clothes, show helmet. No? Can't change anything like that? that kind of sucks. Don't want to have a top knot. Not a big fan of top knots. Do you know what I mean? Meh. Right, his logic is really low. <laughs> that might be bad. That might be bad. Alright, what name are we doing? We're not going to be called Rogue Trader. We're going to be called something else. So what name are we doing?
In fact, you know what? In our original series of Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, Voldred Storm was one of our main interceptors. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to use that. We'll, we'll use Voldred. That's fine. We'll use Voldred. And yeah. Happy days. Well done for helping me design that, folks. Dave, fuck, fuck! I knew I should have named him, named him Dave. Oh, it doesn't matter. I've done it now. Excellent place for contemplation. One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the God Emperor sublimity. One thing I'm I'm glad that they did is that um, in previous Owlcat games, your um, your portrait turned up in NPCs' portraits too. Which is annoying. It's like you're talking to yourself sometimes. Um, so how are we playing this guy? How are we playing this guy? Is he more heretical? Is he more... Is he more on the Emperor's side? Is he more loyalist? What is he? What is he? You know? What is he? Is he rude or is he? I don't know. <clears throat> Let's just go with. Um... Yeah, he's got a headache. He's a psycho. You know what I mean? So he's like, do you have a particular reason for disturbing me? Why not? My apologies. I did not seek you out to pester you with unwanted attention. <clears throat> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitvir, Master of Whispers, in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, at your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. I, I kind of wish I'd called him Dave now. <laughs> My name is Dave. You know? And so to avoid any misunderstanding, I am a sanctioned psyker. Yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll say that, yeah. Anytime I can say something like that, I, I'll, I'll probably just say it. I am aware of that fact. It would have been unacceptable negligence to have overlooked such a detail when compiling your profile. Fate bestowed upon you powers of witchcraft, and a duty to use them for the good of the Imperium. Yours is truly an unenviable lot. I will be frank with you. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius, and carry the burden of an heir of this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it. With honor. Okay. Um.
Yeah, he's probably, like, confused, right? He's probably really confused. So, uh, why am I aboard this vessel, and why have I been brought here? So that you may fulfill your blood duty. Whatever obligations you had before, they are henceforth null and void. By order of the Lord Captain, you have been requisitioned to serve the rogue trader, indeed blessed by the God Emperor. Your former position may have been different from conventional service as part of one of the institutions of the Imperium, but from now on, a different fate awaits you. One chosen for you by the Lord Captain. I advise you to come to terms with this reality as quickly as possible. Hmm. Alrighty. Lord Captain, a strange title for the Lady Theodora. Such are the traditions of the Imperium. Lord Captain is the title that was established in the annals of the Lex Imperialis. At the time when the first rogue traitors entered the Gold Emperor's service. And therefore, it is sacrosanct. You have a curious title, Master of Whisperers. What are your responsibilities? To put it plainly, I am the head of the network of spies and informers who serve the interests of House von Valencius. I uncover weak links both among Lady Theodora's retinue and in the ranks of her rivals. I eliminate our vulnerabilities and exploit those of others. Mm -hmm. I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back. Especially not on board her ship. No one knows better than I that whispers are wont to attract particularly close attention. <laughs> oh, suffice it to say that her ladyship is the bearer of the sacred warrant of trade and a woman of immense power and entitlement. However privileged your position may be, I ask that you do not incur her anger by being disrespectful or obtuse. Lady Theodora despises both qualities. There is. And you will meet him soon enough. But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them there. I I know they're not to trust him, but look, uh, guys, can we keep spoilers to a minimum? Um, mainly because, well, I, I, there are people watching who might not have played this before, and they they want to have a good time. So make sure that you know all of our shtick is is you know um, not spoilery. <clears throat> Yes, uh, uh, they can deal with Xenos. Yes, they can. Yeah, they can do whatever they want, essentially. Pretty cool. Confessor, confessor. Alright. None shall stand in my way. I won't tolerate weakness. I didn't even see what that was before. Can we change his voice? Summary. Um, skills. Biography. <clears throat> mm. 
Hmm. It's about time. I tire of idleness. Let's move. Can, can we change his voice? Is there a way to do that? <clears throat> there we go. Um, no, I think that's it. That's all we can do. That sucks. I'll lay claim to the stars. One of the Fon Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around after your audience with the Lord Captain. What's happening? Character sheet, okay. You mean this? <clears throat> um, it seems like one of those weird things that the game does where where they did it in the, in the last game as well, where, where you can't change after a certain point, but there's no real reason why you can't. They just say you can't. Um... Let me just have a look here, see if I can. We trade a change voice. Um. Hmm. No, you gotta go. You gotta get a mod for it. Um, I'm sorry, guys. That's really gonna bug me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remake the character. It's gonna take me two seconds. I'm gonna remake him. That's gonna bug me because he's got an old man's voice and he's not an old man. He, he's, he's a normal, normal guy, right? So we went with story, no problem. Um, custom character, no problem. We had um, this guy, no problem. Or did we? I think we did. No, we had that guy, didn't we? We'll go with this guy, though. I quite like him. Appearance. Ah, here we go. I skipped it all, didn't I? Shit. My fault. There we go. Hair. None of you motherfuckers said anything, though, did you? When I said, can we change his hair? Like, no! Cheeky. Right. Uh, face. Let's go with that, it's fine. Body. Hair. Um. Yeah. Bit of that, that's fun. <clears throat> to two. Well, these weren't in the game last time. I like that. We'll go with that on the forehead. I'll change his hair as well so we can actually see it. Fine. To two. Got it. Augmentations. He is a psyker, so we will have one. No probs. Augmentation two. I like that. Okay. 
I'll bring glory to my bloodline. Here we go, right? See what I mean? Like, well, that does not suit a psycho at all. Curiosity sings in my veins. There we go. There he is. Blood and mayhem shall be our anthem. Glance, batteries, volley! That's the guy from uh, the original Dawn of War, right? Success is the only outcome I accept. Heresy grows from idleness. Time for a round of space regicide. Through chaos, I stride. Mm. What curiosity unveils itself before me? Hmm. Davos Voldred. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Went Voidborn, didn't we? We had uh, Sanctioned Psyker, didn't we? we had Biomancer. We had... Um, Punch the Demon. We had Grim Portents. We had Warrior, of course. Characteristics. We had that. We had... That, we had that. And we had... Exile. And his name. Ravos. All thread. There we go. There we are. Excellent. That'll suit me. That's better. It is It is annoying that if they say the same three lines, I agree. But also, I'd be more annoyed the fact that the, the, the voice just doesn't suit him. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't suit the character that we're playing. So, it would just have that weird dis, uh, um, disharmony. Seen this bit? Skip that. Hmm. <laughs> An excellent place for contempt. My apology. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am aware I will be frank with you. such are the truth. So that your former position, to put it plainly, I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back. As there is. But of course, the laws. Alrighty, let's go. What lies beyond? One of the Fon Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around after your audience with the Lord Captain. What's happening? Run! The servitors have gone berserk! the game before. All good. <clears throat> Sucks so much it doesn't give you a melee weapon. The old game did this as well, but it's just stupid. Schemes within You, you create schemes. a melee guy, and then immediately it makes you feel just terrible, because you, your character can't do anything. 
Oh, oh you created a melee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's your, here's your one thing that you can do. Taken away. Brilliant. What does that do? Wicked thought. I gave a little tap. Punch that guy. Oh, he dodged. Of course he did. Get to the heretics! What suspiciously poor timing for such an accident. Servitors malfunction on the officer's deck at exactly the same moment when the rogue trader and her heirs are gathered here. I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. I'm afraid I must remain here. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. It is just at the end of this corridor. Alrighty. You can do, I think. You can do. There will be no peace in my wake. Hmm. Patience, my nerves are frayed. That is simply irrational, Lady Theodora. Assimilation into the trade structure would be political and economic suicide. Practically an admission of heresy. Then suggest an alternative that will satisfy me. I have described the situation. No worse than my Seneschal could have done. Make a decision. What will you do with Ion Six, Edelthrad? Your first impression of Edelthrad, who appears to be about 30 years old, is of parchment-like skin stretched over a tightly bundled mass of sinew, implants and bone. The nervously twitching fingers, the face twisted by a slight tick, and the jerky movements are all signs of some illness or defect that has taken over his physical form. All right. In stark contrast to Edelthrad, Theodora von Valencius' features appear as if they were carved from marble. Eternal and indestructible. Head raised high, proud posture, hands clasped casually behind her back. Everything seems to emphasise the difference in status between her and Edelthrad. Behind the two of them, you see two more men. One is a grey-haired officer of impeccable bearing who is studying the contents of his data slate. The other is a behemoth bristling with holsters and baldricks containing all manner of weapons. Our second candidate has joined us. Approach and give me your answer. Uh... Consider this hypothetical situation. Ion 6. A new world on the fringes of the Coronas Expanse. High seismic activity. 
Regular magma eruptions, metamorphic rock deposits, prospects for large-scale mining. The world is populated by natives who worship some heretical underworld spirits that protect those who offer them sacrifices. Flights of fancy, you might say. But attempts to install ore extractors have failed for the second time. The mining crew sent to the planet's surface simply vanished overnight. My question to you is, what would you do with this poisoned treasure? Hmm. Um. <clears throat> yeah, there are ways to confirm whether it, what is happening on Aeon 6 is witchcraft or not. It might cost several psychics to do so, but it will give us the answer. Pharaoh. But presumptuous. It took me a great deal to find one Psyker who could serve me well for many years. Yet you speak of several. Ah, uh, there are a dime a dozen. Sanctioned Psykers are rare and valuable instruments of the Golden Throne. Or do you suggest that we use heretics, who are an offense to the God Emperor's light? It would be rather careless of you to utter such profanity in the presence of his faithful servants. Uh Yeah, I gave a straight answer to a simple question, which I understand was more than you could do, so... Insolent, ignorant upstart! How dare you! Edelthrad, I believe I gave you an assignment on this ship. Explain to me, then, why my senior congregator is still dawdling about the officer's deck, instead of proceeding to the middle decks to commence the inspection of the compartments in his purview. I beg your forgiveness, Lady Theodora. Your presence has such a profound effect on me that I well forgot the time. What a suck up. So, why are you here? Um, there are questions that I wish to have answered. You are direct. I approve. But you will have to wait. There is something I want you to understand first. My name is Theodora von Valencius Massimo of Scarus. I am a rogue trader in the service of the God Emperor of Humanity, and my rights and freedoms are vindicated by a most sacred relic. The Warrant of Trade, kept aboard this very vessel. Mine is the honor to venture into the darkness beyond the Imperium and carry humanity's light where powers wicked and heretical reign and bode death and ruin to us all. It is my decision alone to determine the fate of whatever I find past the bounds of the explored void. Every world I discover, along with all there is to find thereon, resources, people, riches, and mysteries, is mine by right. I command millions of lives, rule over numerous planets, and possess fortunes that no planetary governor or commander could dream of amassing. And you are one of those with Fon Valancius blood in their veins and a rightful claim to this inheritance when the hour comes. All right. One of that mean there are others? Naturally. Some have yet to arrive on board, but you have had the pleasure of meeting one of them. Edelthrad may be somewhat disconcerted by the scale of the responsibilities that may potentially fall upon his shoulders. However, I have a good feeling about him as a candidate. Hmm. 
blood ride alone is not enough to earn the high honor of becoming the bearer of a warrant of trade. Nonetheless, your abilities and talents may yet prove useful. If not for the role of Lord Captain, then for that of their closest ally. <sighs> Alas, even those responsibilities can at times be too challenging for those who share your blood. Kunrad Voitvir served me for many years before he made his mistake. His kinship to me is most distant, as is yours. Nonetheless, he does bear the name Von Valancius, even if he avoids using it publicly and, as such, strictly speaking, can be considered my heir. That door, however, is closed to him. Voitvir's performance in his current role is satisfactory. Or it used to be, at least. Impatience. I am rather fond of impatient people. They are not as quick to resign themselves to circumstance and more eager to show initiative. Even if I do choose Edelthrad as my successor, I will still require loyal advisors. The skills and knowledge you acquired in your former life may prove invaluable here, in the Coronas Expanse. It says in your profile that you bear the brand of sorcery. Albeit, sanctioned sorcery that is permitted in the service of the Imperium. I am accustomed to the presence of psychers at my side. More than that, I value their unique abilities highly. Perhaps that is why I am so intrigued by Edelthrad's candidacy. A rogue trader psyker could achieve great things indeed. However, psychers are fragile creatures. And as such, I would rather have a replacement standing ready in the event that something happens to Edelthrad. Moreover, your courage has made you far more famous than you yourself probably realize. True feats of heroism will forever live on in the annals of the Imperium and bring honor to the Fon Valancius line. I have some time before the Navigator gives the signal to initiate the Void Ship's translation out of the warp, and my presence is required on the bridge. Okay. Is that so? Perhaps the Technomaths were careless during maintenance. Or it could be the warp playing tricks on us in spite of the Gellerfield. Or perhaps there is something to all the stories about the ship being possessed, after all. <laughs> Lady Theodora, for the God Emperor's sake, surely you do not intend to start repeating idle rumors spread about by uneducated riffraff. Enough, Abelard. Such hearsay amuses me. Idira eagerly retells me everything she learns from the whispers of her unseen advisors. This ship is thousands of years old. It has enough hidden nooks, malfunctioning cogitators, and unused compartments to make ignorant folks speak of spectres dwelling inside the bulkheads and plotting against those who yet live. Hmm. The Rykad system, the domain of rogue trader Winterscale, one of my peers and rivals. Besides me, two other rogue traders exist in the Coronas Expanse, and each of them possesses resources comparable to mine. Perhaps you will one day assist House von Valancius in surpassing both of them in affluence and splendor. I set the course for Rykad on the demand that for a very specific reason. Perhaps I shall yet apprise you of the purpose for this voyage, but now is not the time. Observe, learn, absorb. It will take time for you to find your bearings aboard this vessel and in your new position. Eventually, I will find a post that suits you as I did for Edelthrad. Until that time comes, consider yourself my aid. In that case, I shall head to... Ah! 
Disturbances reported on the adjacent decks. Seneschal, if the need arises, protect the new blood. It is possible that the chance to prove your worth may present itself sooner than you may have anticipated. Another annoyance. So your emperor won't save you. I I've got a feeling, right? It's it's auto save there. I've got a feeling. I want to know if somebody said in the chat before that the game had been updated to have voices in it throughout, right? Would you guys mind if I go on my other save just to check that out? Because we may actually have other other voices in there. I just want to check whether it's been updated or whether it, it is similar to what it was. You know what I mean? Like it was just the same. I'm just going to jump in here again. One sec. Because <clears throat> I just want to know what we're looking at here. Those of you who don't know, this part of the story is um, after the initial... Yeah, you know, we become Rogue Trader... We're now the rogue trader, you know, uh, Theodora's out the way, and we're a bit further down the story, so. We're essentially going around a, a, uh, a star system and making sure that it's kosher, making sure that everything's fine. So, I'm going to run around and talk to people, because I want to know whether we can actually, well, wh whether things have actually moved on, and we have full voice acting now. That would be cool. But let me just have a little look. Um, first things first. One th cool thing about the game is you have unlimited space in your inventory for different things, which I quite like. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Let me just remove show helmet off. There we go. Like that. Excellent. So let's see what people's voices were like, or if there are any, because I'd be very, very interested to know. Big old bed he's got, isn't it? Unfinished letter. So this is all stuff that links back to the start of the game, isn't it? So um, this is uh, Theodora talking about um, Voidvir's mistake. So Voidvir, if you didn't know, he he betrays Theodora at the start. So he's the guy who who comes to us. Um, <clears throat> so you know what's going on now. His chagrin is is irrelevant. Voidvir's mistake cost me too much. Years of work, tremendous resources, all wasted. He has failed at what he was supposed to be irreproachable at, uncovering spies, and this one was a senior officer. I am not about to discard him. Conrad has served me for too long for his removal to go painlessly for the protectorate. Besides, he is no fool. He would not have seriously expected to become the next of the Von, von Valencia's line when his skills and talents as Master of Whisperers are so valuable. Let his disinheritance serve as a humili humiliating but instructive lesson from which he may yet learn. Well, obviously he didn't, because he betrayed her in the end. Uh, but I'll collect that. Uh, okay. So one thing you can do in the game as well, if you look over here. Um, I think if we have a look at our character record. So this here... Is again, it's easier to show you this with my my own character because we're a bit further down the line, and I can show you how things kind of work as we go along. So you have different parts to your player personality. So you have dogmatic there, and iconoclast there, and heretical. Now, the guy who I'm playing as right now, he is a big. Essentially, do you guys remember the wrestler Rick Rude? If you don't, go and have a look at him online. 
that is essentially what my character is, but he's an Imperial co Commissar. That's what he is. And so, you know, he's not heretical at all, but he's, he is very pragmatic. He is a pragmatic um, Imperial citizen, right? Doesn't like the warp, doesn't like anything like that. Tends to tends to freak him out, do you know what I mean? Doesn't really like that kind of stuff. That's who he is. That's where he is. And as you move down, as you make decisions in the game, as you move down this track, you get more and more and more powerful abilities. So you get, you know, things like Instrument of His Will down here, which, which gets better and better as you go up. You have, you know, uh, Excellence. And as you go up to the, the heretical one, you have uh, Zealot, which is the, the dark version of the dogmatic personality. So it's pretty cool. Um, athletics we've got. We've got all of these things that have happened since we've started the game. So we've got, you know, pretty good at fellowship. Uh, we are a leader archetype, so we, we give other people points to do and things. So we, we make all of our all of our guys better. I thought that really worked for an Imperial Commissar. So he's, he's a leader, but he's also got his big fuck-off Thunder Hammer. Do you know what I mean? So he's good in combat. Uh, we've got features here, um, which are just your talents and things. We've got archetypes, which is, you know, what you've become as you've gone on. So I started as an officer. All right, so I started as as a guy who is telling other people what to do, which you know happens, and uh, then I got vanguard as well, which is like a guy. I am an officer leading from the front. I'm at the front line uh, leading, which works for me. Um, so, uh, reputation. These are your reputation with the different um, factions across the map, right? So you got different people over there, and your profit factor down here. Uh, basically tells you how much power you're getting as a rogue trader. So you're running around this part of the galaxy, doing different missions for people, and the more you do, the more um, the more things you can get, the more cool sh shit you can you can get, right? Which is kind of, you know, it happens. And that is where we are. That is where we are. And your biography is literally what you've done in the story up to now. So uh, during the prologue, I led the people out of the fire trap using Theodora's help. Iconoclast. So basically, there was a <clears throat> fire on the ship, and we had this, you know, person thing come to try and save me, and I did, you know. Um, ordered the defective servitors to be destroyed in order to end their suffering. Uh, donned the heretic's clothing to save the tech priest. Allowed the terrified citizens to follow you when darkness fell on Rykad Minoris. Doubted the virtues of the ecclesiarchy whilst conversing with Reverend Hieronymus. Commended, uh, commented on the important role of the Xeno artifact trade on Footfall, plays in learning more about hostile Xenos races. So Footfall is a place you go to uh, when you start your campaign. Uh, essentially, like, like, a, like a, a nice, um, shall we say, area to be in. Like it, it, it's, a, it's a, how do I put it, a middle ground for people to go to. Um, executed the rebel, granted the Emperor's peace to Abel, you know, Viewed the uh, vow to kill Aurora in the name of the Emperor. Gave the hand guard of the heretical blade to Heinrich. So you get a heretical sword throughout the game. You can keep this blade. And you can get more and more pieces to it. And then you can reforge it if you want. And if you're a Chaos Aligned person. It gives you really big benefits. But maybe at a really big cost later on in the game. And if you're dogmatic. You can actually turn from one to the other. From what I understand. By doing your... Uh, by, by finishing that sword. Um, destroyed Ry destroyed Rykad Minoris with an orbital strike. And greeted Reverend Hieronymus with the sign of the Aquila. So that these are all the things that I've done. That the game has taken note of. And basically given me personality points towards those things. And uh, yeah. One thing I am not. Is, is a heretic in this exact... Um... Already have that feature. We'll get that. <clears throat> can he? Is he? Is he? Can we get more? No, we can't. What are you talking about? Oh, we get to do this, right? Assassin, Vanguard, Arch Militant. Go with Assassin. He's pretty good at that. We'll go with that. Um, go with that. Excellent. So, uh, yeah. We're going to go talk to different characters now. Because I want to find out whether their voice acting is, is on point. And if it is, then I get to do this in my own time. 
because it's been ages since I've come back to the game, you see. So if it is, and I thought it better to show you this stuff as my character rather than going through as the character that we created because now you can see, you know, how these things play out as we go along rather than me just saying, in 17 hours, you'll get to this point. You know, it, it's a lot easier just to show you what happens um, as you play the game. I really, 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 really like, really like um, but, uh, Rogue Trader. I stopped playing it only because um, I think something else came out at the time. Oh. Okay. Shrine of Remembrance. And these must be all the people who backed, who backed the game, right? Cool. To what do I owe this visit? Ah, so it is. I think it is. That's cool. <laughs> I'm usually the one interested in the pasts of those around me. Not the reverse. I come from a night world. Gwizorn Three. I belong to a branch of one of the noble houses until my exceptional abilities were discovered. After that, I was sent on a black ship to Holy Terra where I was trained, and I began my service for the glory of the Imperium. So the black ship is what you get put psychers on. What I like about this is that they tell you little bits of 40k lore that you're actually needing to go into it too in depth, you know what I mean? You know? I do, but I have no ties to my homeworld now. None except my first name. I left Guizorn Three when I was still a child. My family disowned me, stripping me of my family name. I was given a new one by those who trained me. Even for a noble, being branded a psyker is a mark of eternal shame. I experienced that firsthand before I was put on the black ship. Have you guys noticed? Right, magic in settings like this. Magic always tends to be something of, of a downer, something that you don't want, you know? Have you noticed that? It's the same in, in Warhammer um, Fantasy, 40k, obviously. Um, you know, A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, you know, Dragon Age. Most new fantasy, being a mage isn't good. This is kind of why I wanted to, to load my save as well, uh, my, my personal save, because I get to talk about things like this. Whereas the other the other save, I've got that much longer to be on, you see. So the other save, the one that we were starting, I would have, you know, you've got to go through all loads of exposition before you get to the actual, oh, here is the law, here is the setting, here's what we're doing, you know, that kind of a thing. How did you discover your abilities? Like many psychers unaware of their curse, I found out when a strong emotional reaction triggered an involuntary response. My great aunt had a pet grink. One day, it bit me, and I boiled it from inside out. And when my great aunt slapped me for what I'd done, I boiled her too. Oh shit. Um, I expected a more dramatic story. Um. Yeah, he would say that sorcerer's powers are truly dangerous. I hope you've mastered your ability since then. When I arrived on Holy Terror and was tested, I was found to be suitable material for becoming a sanctioned psyker, able to bend his curse to his own will. I can assure you that the adepts of the Astra Telepathica were right in their assessment. Okay. That's it, Raziel. Yes, that is a very, very, very good 
way to put it in terms of magic. Yeah. So magic in 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 systems in in, in settings to me it's only really as interesting as its limitations. If you've got limitless magic and, and a magic system that can basically do anything without any repercussions, that kind of robs your setting and the story of any weight and nuance. What you want is a, is a magic system that has limitless power potential, like we do in 40k, but it has serious drawbacks that means that very few people will ever reach that height. You know, Most of them will die a screaming, bubbling wreck. And I think that's the best way to do to do magic. Um, don't ever be afraid when you're writing to to recognise that there are new, no, no new good things under the sun, right? It's totally okay to see a vague idea in somebody else's work, like a George Martin or a, or a or a Joe Abercrombie or whatever whatever writer you like. It could be 40k. Don't worry about lifting ideas from those. Changing them a bit to make them yourselves, right? To, to fit them into your narrative and then plunk them down in your world. There's nothing wrong with that because there is there is nothing new under the sun, right? Whatever you think of, somebody else has already thought of it. So give yourself a break when it comes to writing. Said this before when it comes to making your own Space Marine chapter, right? Give yourself a break. Everybody's had the idea you're having, but you're having the idea and making it your own. It's important and unique to you. We only start to stumble into issues when we start using other people's work and passing it up, passing it off as our own, right? Don't do that. But if you've got your own uh, setting, you've got your own uh, thing that you're working on and you need a magic system and you look at 40k and you think, that's a cool magic system. There's nothing wrong with taking the ideas behind that magic system, changing them to fit your setting and then slotting them straight in. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's fine. You know? It works. It works. Tell me about the black ship. Picture a vast prison ship filled with frightened, angry psychers who can't control their abilities and who have just lost their homes and their families. Some of them were children and adolescents like I was. Some were monstrous creatures who no longer had the right to be called human or psychopaths who reveled in their impure powers. Once, when one of the miscreants broke free, those in command simply depressurized the bay and got rid of the culprit, along with the prisoners and crew tainted by him. But even after that, I heard the echo of inhuman suffering and terror that filled that part of the ship. It grieves me to recall that episode to this day. This is something that the game does really, really well, in that it, it grounds you in uh, the lore as you're going along. The first, what I will say, the first 10 to 15 hours are very, very slow. Very slow. But once you get on the ship and you're, and you're given freedom to walk around the world, do what you want to do, that's when the interesting parts of the story and the lore really start turning their heads. Which is why I chose to check whether we had voice acting later on in the story. Because it, it actually is more interesting to me than, you know, Hello, new player number one. Come into this corridor and play this combat with a gun. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Um, so you were sent to the Inquisition straight after your training? No. First, I was accorded the status of a psyker fit for service in the Imperial Guard, where I then spent several years. It was only afterward that I became an agent of the Golden Throne. Okay. How long have you served the Inquisition? Since the day of my initiation as an acolyte. So, decades. How many real years it's been, it's hard to say. When I return from a journey through the warp, I often discover that much more or much less time has passed in real space. You visited many worlds during your service, I'd wager. Indeed. I have visited many of the places brought to the Emperor's light, and those sullied by the filth of the Arch Enemy. In truth, even after all these years spent visiting the various corners of the Imperium and looking beyond its borders, I still consider the Segmentum Solar to be the greatest of all humanity's bastions. Nothing compares 
to the majesty of holy terror, the might of Mars, the grandeur of the segment's other worlds. Including Titan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, what duties have you been carrying out for the Inquisitor? You can't really be expecting me to answer that question, can you? For someone who's been in service for decades, you certainly look young. The first step for biomancers such as myself is to take control of the processes of their own body, including aging. <laughs> I've endured innumerable hazards in my work. If I allowed every trace of them to remain, I would look completely different today. Gladly. You're not the Inquisitor's only acolyte, correct? <laughs> of course not. The Lord Inquisitor's entourage comprises dozens of people. The best of the best. Experts in various fields and disciplines. Some of them I know personally. Others I have never met. Uh, you're right, Raziel. Yeah. Uh, Grey Knight says, are you going to play Space Marine 1 and 2 on stream? Uh, 2, yes. 1, probably not. It's too old now and, I'm, and, I've, and I've not really got the time to play it. But 2, yes. To be honest, I'm not even certain that the people I know are still alive. I used to work with other acolytes of the Lord Inquisitor, but in the Coronas Expanse, I have been working alone. Hmm. If you're an interrogator, does that mean you hold a special position in the retinue? <laughs> we are not a retinue. We are acolytes. As for your question, I am closer than anyone else to the one I call my personal teacher. The Lord Inquisitor deemed me worthy of undertaking the most important and sensitive tasks requiring the attention of agents of the Golden Throne. Don't you get lonely? Is, is this a romance part? Let's see. I rarely have the time or the opportunity to think about it. Are there other acolytes in the Acronis Expanse? Such as? Um, I want to discuss the Cult of the Final Dawn. What can you tell me about it? This is part of the main story. This will be quite interesting. The Cult's ordinary members are humans who have been corrupted by the Archenemy, traitors to the Imperium, and accomplices of Chaos. Participation in the Cult's rituals always entails brainwashing, literally and figuratively. The longer cult members spend among other cultists, the less critically they think and the more closely they resemble obedient livestock, stripped of their fear and instinct for self-preservation. The worst of them go to their deaths without an inkling of doubt, ready to take hundreds and thousands of souls with them. Hmm. As for those at the top of the cult's hierarchy, we have not yet managed to get a lead on all of the cult's leaders. I imagine that some of them are hiding in the depths of the Coronas Expanse. But those who are orchestrating the fanatics on nearby worlds are hiding very well indeed. Or receiving protection from above. I need to confirm the reports from my agents. According to them, one of the cult's leaders is in the Kiava Gamma segment. An industrial world within the dominion of the Fon Falancius dynasty. I hope you won't impede my investigation. Hmm. What do you mean, protection from above? <laughs> Governors, commanders, rogue traders. History is full of those who neglect their duty to the Golden Throne and seek allies in the wrong places. Hmm. We discovered the first traces of it as soon as we arrived in the Coronas Expanse. Since then, the more we learn, the better we see just how far the roots of this blight extend. Destroying individual cells is pointless. We must cut this beast off at its head. As you wish. The Lord Inquisitor was most insistent that I master the discipline of Santic Demonology. I use my faith and my power to crush the enemies of the Imperium. 
Servants of Chaos tremble at the sound of the Emperor's name, uttered by my lips. I am also a skilled biomancer. I can manipulate bodily processes. Sometimes... Sometimes I resort to those skills in the course of my work, when it is necessary to make the subject of an interrogation more cooperative. That would be kind of not... not... yeah. Uh, nice. <clears throat> okay. Cool. One sec. Alrighty. Lord Captain. A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. I am ready to acquaint you with all the particulars that interest you. Now, I'm going to click these again because I've been a while since I played this. Outline the situation in the Cronus Expanse for me. What do I need to keep in mind? This will be good for you if you're thinking of playing the game. All this information will be handy as you go along. This is a topic for an official briefing, not a casual conversation. But I will try to answer succinctly. And if you permit, in my own words... <sighs> the Coronas Expanse is considerably removed from the heart of the Imperium. This means that local warp routes become useless within months. Established pathways are regularly subject to attacks from all kinds of rabble. And in the only major port, the Imperium's frigates find themselves moored alongside pirate vessels. Until recently, the Coronas Expanse could hardly have been called a region of the Imperium. The situation has changed with the arrival of the Lord Inquisitor, but not by much. This place operates under its own rules, you see. More radical, so to speak. But ones that allow for a non-standard approach where there is a promise of victory. The Coronas Expanse has considered rogue trader territory for a reason. Only rogue traders have sufficient military might, audacity, and the rights granted them by the Warrant to survive the leap into the unexplored part of the Expanse, and in the event of a successful outcome, to hold on to whatever they manage to capture on the frontier. Mm. In the first instance, you should treat official representatives of the Imperium with respect. The Expanse may be on the fringes, but it still numbers among the territories of the Golden Throne. The arrival of the Lord Inquisitor has turned the Coronas Expanse into a less wild and uncontrolled region, to the regret of some individuals who had grown inured to the local lawlessness. Rogue traders such as yourself are also servants of the Imperium. They have been accorded special rights and powers. They wield immense authority within their territory, and they enjoy absolute respect in other parts of the Expanse. The most powerful of them are Caligos Winterscale and Incendia Bastal Chorda. Tread carefully when dealing with either of them. Names to remember. In fact, I think Theodora told us about that in the, in the prologue that we played through, right? Winterscale. If we are to speak of unclaimed territory, which is what Footfall is, among the scum that dwells on that handful of asteroids, there are three factions that wield considerable influence in the sector. The first is the Kasbala Commission, organized crime in its most primitive form. It holds sway over the liege of footfall and has links to rogue trader Winterscale. The second faction is an offshoot of our shining Ecclesiarchy, followers of St. Drusus. They are actively building their forces and hold influence over rogue trader Chorda. And finally, the third faction, the Explorators, a wing of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are willing to die and kill for the secrets of the ancient technological heresies that are hidden among the stars of the Coronas Expanse. I wonder if he's, like, more pushing us towards going with the Admech there, because they're, they're not related to anybody, as other people are, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, Conrad, our previous Master of Whisperers, what can you tell me about his betrayal, and what do you think he'll do next? You know, Lord Captain, I am no admirer of fine art. But when we next find ourselves in a civilized port, with time to spare, I will promptly find an artist and commission a portrait of the individual to whom you refer. 
with a hole between the eyes. Conrad Voitfeer. That he committed his treachery and escaped with his life was an unforgivable oversight. Um, Michigan, this is the Commissar because I wanted to show you a bit further in the game. Because I think I think people were asking questions in the chat that I couldn't really answer because I didn't have it with, you know, you don't have access to certain menus at the start. I wanted to also see whether people were right in their assertions in the chat that maybe voice acting had been added to the game in more parts later on. And we're finding out, thanks to me loading this save, that there has been a big, big patches. So make sure you go and play this game. It is currently... Um, is it on offer? I don't think it is on offer, but we'll see. Let me have a little look. Um, but make sure you go and give it a chance, especially now that they've added in a complete, it looks like, complete voice acting. It's forty-two ninety-nine right now. Not the best price in the world, but, you know, uh, I'll be very interested to go down to an Imperial world and see whether they've got voice acting for all the NPCs. That would be amazing. I noticed the file size is a lot bigger than it was. It used to be around 20 gigs. Now it's about 35, so... That should tell you something. We both served Lord Captain Theodora for many years, and we never saw eye to eye. He was brash. He was never afraid of assuming responsibility, and he willingly took on difficult tasks. I am loath to admit it, but the Von Valancius Protectorate continues to reap the fruits of his labors to this day. His service always garnered my respect. But everything else about him made me want to wring the neck of that two-faced snake. If you are taking comfort in the thought that we will hear no more of Conrad, prepare to be disappointed. You thwarted his plans, his meticulously plotted and nurtured treachery. <laughs> he is sure to attempt to strike at you, and he will use his contacts and knowledge of the Protectorate to do so. The only question, Lord Captain, is whether you will be able to anticipate his next steps. Ah, Stephen, cheers, mate. Um, the voice acting isn't complete, but they have expanded a lot of it for the main characters, in addition to a lot of bug fixing and some rebalancing. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think that they would do every NPC. That was my, that was my wishful thinking there coming through. But to have every um, companion and main character voice acted is brilliant and it's going to be a, a lot for the immersion so um as you wish lord captain lord captain pretty cool now this person is not a main character let's see if she's voiced no she's not okay so she's not um she's not in there she, she, she's not voiced okay fair enough she is voiced in certain places though which makes me feel that maybe they've, they've left a few characters behind that you're not going to speak to all the time. Um. <clears throat> a thin, pale woman stands out from among the rest of the crew. There is a thick bu bundle of cables coming off to the back of her skull and disappearing under her ceremonial garment. And you see the grate of a quietly humming vox where her mouth should be. The woman sees you and bows her head respectful in a respectful greeting. Okay. Um... Remind me who you are. Voxmaster Octavus Vigis Suri Arta of the to Ptolemon Dynasty. The current Voxmaster serving aboard your vessel in accordance with the Seneschal's orders. I assume this duty immediately upon the demise of the esteemed Voxmaster Septimus, who was my great who was, who was my grandfather. Okay. What are the Voxmaster's duties? I am in the ear I am the ears and voice of this void ship. I supervise several dozen officers and three times that number of support personnel. We receive, send, encrypt and decode all incoming and outgoing messages through the ship's internal and external channels. And we also ensure clean communications and optimal efficiency of the crew's box casters. If you ever want to know what worries and concerns your crew are harbouring, what your subjects are whispering about in the local networks after their watches, what the leaders are clamouring about over shortwave Vox transmissions, just come and see me. I will satisfy your curiosity. Okay. Alright. Have the Vox spirits brought you anything interesting lately? You may be interested to know that a group of officers was discussing a grim rumour over lunch. 
Word has it that the apparition of Lord Captain Theodora has been sighted on board lately. Yes, you heard right. They say she is haunting the decks, dragging wayward crew members off into oblivion. This quiet has spread throughout the ship, as the anomaly has been reported in different sections, sometimes entire kilometres apart. Yeah, the size of 40k ships are fucking huge. You know, they go on for miles. <clears throat> Master Henrix von Kallux expressed interest in our communication sections and void nets a short while ago. The interrogator appears to be very well versed in the matters of secret technology, and it worries me. A man of his knowledge in his line of work is capable of discreetly planting his own devices in our systems. We will be vigilant, Lord Captain, but you should try to be more careful as well. Okay. Why do you look so strange? Bit of a nasty question, but there you go. My appearance comes from my heritage, generation after generation of people who spent their lives in the depths of this void ship. Neither we nor our ancestors have ever left our home. We are used to the silence of the cosmos and the voices of the ship. There are thousands of us, but we dwell far from the Lord Captain's upper decks and remain unseen. We are the Voidborn. Alright. Where does the word Voidborn come from? It's a bit self-explanatory, but there we go. Because we are children born in the void between the stars, be it the womb of a travelling vessel, an orbital satellite, or a forgotten asteroid station. Low gravity, voyages in the warp, and the countless dangers of space travel, everything others hate and dread is second nature to us. Tell me about the lives of the void born in my crew. To us, the groans, creaks, and murmurs of the ship around the way... Uh, around the ship sound the way babbling brooks and singing birds do to world dwellers. We hear the ship breathe, know it is feeling and thinking. We are part of the ship just as it is a part of us. We perform numerous functions and there are so many officers among our number. Uh, some maintain order and prevent mutiny, others serve as shepherds and support the crew, and some devote themselves to mending the body and spirit of the vessel itself. Most of the void born are members of large void ship dynasties that bear responsibility for a certain aspect of the ship's life. For 300 years, the main branch of the Ptolemon dynasty has produced the ship's vox masters, and most of our subordinates come from the cadet houses of the dynasty. So the ship's so big, right, it's actually got its own royal families who work on the ship. How mental is that? That's how big the ship is. All right, and those families have cadet branches. You know what I mean. How would you find life on the ship? Life has been quite generous to me, Lord Captain. I am the Vox Master, and only the best in the dynasty can become one. By virtue of my skills and position, nobody has ever denied me anything. Our family claims a spacious section for its demands. I also enjoy long walks through the narrow and dimly lit corridors of the ship, listening to the sounds of her activity falling asleep and waking up to the chanting of the hymns, and admiring the, st and admiring the stars beyond, of course. Okay. Um, okay. Connect me to the, the vessel's main channel. I wish to bolster the morale of my crew. You address the crew with a rousing speech and hear your voice roll through the ship, reaching even the normally quiet corners of the vessel. When the broadcast ends, you hear distant shouts of approval. That'll be all for now. This guy's basically a YouTuber. <laughs> right. I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Um, I'm going to come. I just wanted to show you the game basically, but I'm going to come off for a little bit, and we will um, have a little chat, shall we? We'll have a little chat before I finish. Because I'm going to have my dinner. I'm starving. Absolutely starving. Uh, my missus has come in with some with some nice stuff. So we're going to be um, eating that, which will be very, very, very nice. So what hobby projects have we got on the go, folks? Have we got some decent stuff on the way? Or are you guys more clamouring to have yourselves some quiet time away from the hobby? Can go either way, I know. To whack some 
music on, shall we? Hmm. Be around here somewhere. Me too, Brawl. I am me too. I'm painting Lionel Johnson as we speak. Oh my god. Hello, one second. Sorry, that was a miss. Sorry. Yeah, Lionel Johnson's like a model that I've always been reticent to paint. He just looks so. How do I put it? He's a lot, isn't he? Like, there's a lot of detail on there. Saw one that was, I, I, and again, I kind of like him better with the uh, with the helmet on. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. I like, kind of like him better with the helmet on. Do you know what I mean? This looks better. Looks cool though. Um, what is everybody saying? Painting Lana Johnson as we speak, cool. I'm building Logan Grimnar as we speak. This is my first real model. Wow, congratulations to you, Barola. Cheers. You could have picked a better a better person, but you know, Lana Johnson's fine. It's not sorry, Logan Grimnar's fine, I suppose. Is that the old model? Logan Grimnar. Which which one is it? Is it the Forge World one? Or is it the uh, the new one? The, 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 the one that was revealed at Warmer Fest last year. You know what I mean? Is it this one? Or, or is it another one? Battle tech. That is something that I've really, really, really wanted to get into. Because so many people, so many people have told me to, you've got to play Battle Tech, you've got to play Battle Tech, you'll love it. It just uh, I've just never had the time. Starting a new a new war game is is not easy. You're gonna be there for a long time. Trying to trying to figure figure stuff out. You know? What do you mean by that, Brawler? So you said, oh, I'm learning that you can't fluffy build and paint if you want it to look good. You have to build uh, paint, build paint. What do you mean? What do you mean by fluffy build paint? Hey, North, if you could put an anime in 40k, what would it be? Um, what do you mean? Do you mean like... If I had to make a, a 40k anime, what would it be about? Or if do I need to transplant an anime to 40k? If we're transplanting something to... If, if it's going to be a, a, an anime in 40k... Um, I'd probably do... I don't know. Probably... I don't know, you know. An anime in 40k. I'd probably stay away from Space Marines. Maybe Eldar. Eldar would be pretty cool. 
Eldar as an anime. You know, they're very weebish. That'd be pretty cool. They, they, they are very samurai-like. Not as weebish as uh, Tao, of course, but, you know. And in terms of injecting an, an, an anime story into 40k, Berserk. Right? Because you can already do it. Uh, Griffith from Berserk is essentially ripped straight into 40k. He's Fulgrim. Right? He's Fulgrim. And I would actually create an Iron Hands... Um, an Iron Hands legionary character who is cursed to you know, to undeath by Ferris Manus' spirit until he finds and kills, gives a true death to Fulgrim. That's what I would do. So you'd sort of be like this, this lone, wandering samurai type figure who's been alive for thousands of years. He'd be the Iron Hands cipher. Do you know what I mean? He's been around for thousands of years. He keeps turning up and just decking people, right? He, 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 has, he has a massive sword, and he's a, he's much larger than normal Astartes. Why? Because he's, he's empowered by the spirit of, Fen of Ferris Manus. He's literally mantling the spirit. He's possessed by Ferris Manus. So he, he, he's he, he's Ferris Manus's vengeance given the form, and he strides around the galaxy looking for Fulgrim, essentially. And that would be my anime. That's what I would do. Hey, Cine Dave. How's it going, man? Oh, right, Brawler. I get you, mean. If I completely build the model and then paint, there are spots there that it would be a struggle to reach some spot. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've done that as well. I used to do that all the time. You know. But yeah. If you guys want access to this music, it is um, here. It's essentially, a how do I put it? A, a lo-fi version, chill tune version of of the Cyberpunk 2077 soundtrack. It's pretty cool. Cheers, Dave. I'm sorry that Dave's got such a bashing and your name's Dave. That would suck. Doesn't Cole have a lot of metal parts? Like loads of metal parts. So you could just go over the metal with some iron and then just, just ink it, right? Could you not do that? I reckon you could. Theodore Roosevelt Lost World Exodus. Okay. Oh my god, that looks amazing. It's Theodore Roosevelt riding a, riding a, uh, oh my god. I love that so much. Oh my god. Oh, I need this model, man. That's brilliant. Bogland? Where's Bogland? <clears throat> I 
I will be on tomorrow, by the way, and I'll be starting about six o'clock tomorrow. So um, today was one of those days where I had to download games to get going, but I think to, to, uh, I've now downloaded all the games I need to. So tomorrow at six, I'll be on same time. Well, no, on normal time from now on. Every Monday and Tuesday from now on, I will be doing streams where we can chill out for one or two hours and just talk and help each other out mental health, mental health wise and, you know, have fun. It's not really about the games and playing anyway. This is why I did a, a poll because I don't really care about the games and playing. It's more spending time with you guys and having fun, you know. If you haven't played Cyberpunk 2077 in its latest car incarnation, get the fuck out there and play it. Okay? Get out there and play it. Absolutely play it. It's aged like a fine wine. There's a thing about Rogue Trader, Dave. That, um, so Rick Priestley said this the other day. Um, so essentially, Rogue Trader was something that he thought up before going to Games Workshop, right? Um, so he, he thought of Rogue Trader long before he went to Games Workshop. And it was one of those things where he, he had this game in his head. He'd been designing games for a while and he had this game in his head where you are essentially a star captain going around the galaxy, doing missions, building up your ship and your fleet, getting involved in, in the politics and all sort of, thing, sort of things. It's kind of like a kind of like an RPG, right? But with with, with wargamey elements to it. He had that in his head. Then he goes to work for Games Workshop and he has to work on Warhammer 40,000 or essentially proto what will become Warhammer 40,000. And he'd announced Rogue Trader years ago. And people were just badgering him about Rogue Trader all the time. Like, where's Rogue Trader? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And so Rick Priestley, the guy who made 40k, essentially said to, to the guys at Games Workshop, look, I've got this, this property, Rogue Trader, that I'm, I'm working on in my own time. What do you want me to do with it, you know? And instead of, like, telling him, oh, yeah, make that game too. No problem. They, they said, well, you can do what you want with it, but we're not going to release it as a game, you know? So what Rick Priestley did, to get everybody off his back, he named Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Right? That's all that's there. That's the only reason Rogue Trader is even in the name. Because they don't really appear in the book that much, right? The only reason Warhammer 40,000 was called Rogue Trader, you know, as, as a subset of the name, was because Rick Priestley wanted to tell everybody else, there's Rogue Trader, stop bothering me. <laughs> Which I found was really, really, really funny. Um, so yeah, that's why it's called Rogue Trader because it's it's not a it's um, it's it was going to be a game in its own right, and it sounded brilliant. In fact, it sounded a lot like the game we were just playing, which I think's cool. I think that's really, really, really cool, and I really hope Rick has played that game and had some fun with it because he deserves to because he because he, he, it was his idea in the first place. Um, yeah, a lot of the, the a lot of the 40k if, uh, if affection of 40k also comes from proto rogue trader. So it was rogue trader as as um, Rick Priestley was talking about it. <clears throat> you know, the way he talks about it is is 40k. A lot of the things that are in it, like the Catholicism, the the religious dog dogmatism, things like that, they were originally in his in his thoughts for rogue trader, right? He comes into Games Workshop, he makes Warmer 40,000, calls it Rogue Trader, and away we go to the races. So, I think Ro Rogue Trader it is, it did exist in the end. It did exist in the end as a thing, you know? But it was called Warmer 40,000. So, there you go.
I do quite like the, uh, the old rogue, tra rogue Trader box. How much was it? Does anyone know? The new one? Before I Google it. Rogue Trader re-release. Have a little look. Thirty-five quid. That's not too bad. That ain't too bad at all. That ain't too bad. That's good. So last night, um, um, I made the, the big mistake of um, Googling my channel, you know. <laughs> yeah. Reddit's not a nice place, is it? You know. I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a positive opinion on Reddit. I mean, it's the only thing that stopped me from going into a spiral of depression. When I read people saying, oh, he only, like... You know, he, he garners negativity and, and he's bad for the hobby and all that sort of shit. And I was like, oh, no, I don't. What? Did you even watch my stuff? You know, what's all this about? And then I realised, oh, right, I'm, I'm on Reddit. No. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm on Reddit. Literally, the only stuff on here is negative and snide. So, it's just a cesspool. I've never had a Reddit account and I never will get one. It just... Even at university, like the people who were on Reddit, you know, in university, when I was at university, the people of my friends who were on Reddit were all the fucking basement dwellers. The, the hairy palmed people who didn't, never got laid. They were the ones who were on Reddit. I hung around loads of people who were all nerds, right? And all the ones who had girlfriends who went out and had fun and, and, and still were still nerdy, you know? Still real uber nerds. None of them were on Reddit. They never had accounts. Well, why would they? They don't live online, you know. And it's never changed. Um, you know, I'm very conscientious about um, that 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 the channel doesn't become a a spiral of negativity. I'm very 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 conscious of that. Is that you know it can't be that. Um, I'm determined that it's not going to be that. Uh, it's just Games Workshop make it very, very, very hard to give them any any praise, you know, because they they just fuck up all the time, constantly. Age of Sigmar players, I I see you, I feel you, you know, that must suck. Um, I'm not going to do a video on it uh, in particular because it's been covered to death already. Um, all of these news things they break over the weekend when I'm not doing videos, and so by the time I can do a video on it. The moment's passed, you know? So. But it's fine. I'd rather stay out of it. I'd rather stay out of, you know, Games Workshop at the worst and every single video I do. I'd, I'd rather stay out of it, you know? But they are the worst. <laughs> I think that too, Decada, yeah. I think that too. I think that too. I think people get confused. They seem to think that, you know, I'm reading negative... When things negative things happen in stories, that I'm purporting that and I'm putting it out there. But to be honest with you, if you're going through something similar, right? Say you're going through a bad breakup and there's a breakup nightmare on Hobby Nightmares and that guy gets some good advice, you know, that empowers him and lets him live a better life. 
Well, that's going to do the same for you when you're listening to it, right? Do you know what I mean? So even though we're, we're covering a negative thing, we're getting a positive out of it. That's what Hobby Nightmares is all about. It's covering negative stuff, but saying, you know what, there's, there's good to, be, to get from here, you know? There's good to get from here. <clears throat> Skipping the song, I don't like it. I don't know, Brawler, I like discourse. I, I do think sometimes that she goes a bit too far. You know? Um, especially with the thumbnails. I mean, I know, my thumbnails are super, like, you know, outrageous, but they're, they're not clickbaity. Do you know what I mean? Like, all the thumbnails are... They're, they're, they're all my thumbnails cover exactly what's in the video, right? And I don't I don't bait and switch either. What, what you see is what you get you know, on my thumbnails. I made that very, very, very clear to my thumbnail guy, James. He's a really cool guy. And uh, I made that very clear. We, we can't do... We cannot do... Um, clickbait. Because it'll just tank the channel. We can't do that. It's got to be funny. All of our thumbnails have got to be funny, evocative, eye-catching, but also true. Like, that's what's in, the, in the, the Hobby Nightmare episode, right? And we work very hard to maintain that standard. Um... Discourse tends to fall off a cliff with that sometimes. It goes a bit too far. And a lot of uh, the thumbnails I found are, are very, very, very clickbaity. But it's the algorithm, isn't it? You know, you do what you got to do to get your to keep your numbers up. Um, I would always rather, like, give people what they came to see and not clickbait them uh, and, and accept your losses. There have been channels, there have been videos on my channel that haven't done very well. But, I, but you, you just accept your loss. You go, you know what? That one didn't do very well. The algorithm didn't like it fair you know um and there we are whereas whereas what i think other people tend to do is that they'll sensationalize tidbits of news and they'll they'll put you know these provocative statements um these provocative statement thumbnails on there that aren't really reflective of what's in the video which is a law of diminishing returns eventually you'll be found out you know what i mean um That's the thing, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, Mac is very similar. Yeah, I think Mac, I take that as a compliment because I quite like the Outer Circle, uh, his channel. Um, you know, I think it is. Th th there's, it's okay to be salty. It's okay to be annoyed when there's things to be annoyed about. But salt farming, salt salt mining is not really something that I like to do because it's not energy that I want in my life. You know, it's just not. I just, you know. When, when they're dickheads, I'll tell them, Games Workshop. But, uh, you know. But as, as a channel, I don't really mind discourse minis when I'm in the mood for her. I do find a lot of the time some of the negativity is a bit much for me. And, and if I've had a bad day or I'm, I'm, or I'm on a good day and a, or a normal day and I don't want to be dragged down, I won't watch it. You know what I mean? I've got to be in a very specific mood for a content. So, um... The thing with that, Jimmy, though, the thing with that, mate, is that there are also YouTubers who go the other way. So they see a lot of negativity because they want to be a voice in the circle. They will come in and give positivity where it's not deserved or needed. I've seen that with the Age of Sigmar thing. There's been a few YouTubers who have stood up for Games Workshop and said, no, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. But imagine buying, getting into Stormcast Eternals, you know, buying some of their models. Thinking, oh, those flying guys look cool, you know, on, on the parchment. They look pretty cool. You go and buy them, you get them home, and then you find out that in a year's time they're going to not be legal. It's like, great, thanks. I mean, isn't that fraud? Is that not fraud? It's borderline, right? If you don't tell me that this thing is going to be useless in, in, a, in, in a year's time, when you sell it to me on false pretenses, that's fraud. Is it not? I don't know. And that's why I think a lot of people are getting annoyed with it, is that they've gone into Games Workshop and they're being sold these models and encouraged to buy these models that are going to be fucking useless in a year's time. For competitive play, anyway. Do you know what I mean? So that's where I think the, the grey area comes in. Um, I understand why Games Workshop gets rid of these models. I understand why they get rid of them. I do. 
they're not, they're not selling well. And they want to update the range, fine. But there are ways and means of doing it, right? Let people keep their models in the game, thank you. Just release new stuff, right? Release new stuff. There's flying guys, you know? Leave them on. Uh... So, who are they? Um, the prosecutors. So the prosecutors, all, all, all of the all of the stuff from Stormcast Eternals, for me, right, should just be left as it is. They stay in the game, all of it stays in the game, no problem whatsoever, right? But we're releasing new models that are going to replace these models in the range. But they're still legal, you can still use them, no problem whatsoever, and we'll just replace them, right? Um, you know, I know there's bloat out there, but that's fine. But there's nothing wrong with choice, in my opinion. Right? There's nothing wrong with choice. Having choice. No problem. Just keep it in there. They could have kept these models and kept everybody happy and just released new stuff, and they didn't. You know? Do you know why? Because they want to force you to buy the new stuff. They want to force you to buy the new stuff. That's what they do. That's what they want to do. That's the only reason this has been made. They could have kept the models as they were and made them made to order or something. You know what I mean? But they didn't. They said, no, we're getting rid of this range, and you have to buy a new one. That's why. That's why it's there. You know? Iron Golems, mate. Yeah, sorry about that, Grot. Oh, my God. I've got a mate who loves Dragon Ogre Shagoths in, in Age of Sigmar. Just loves playing them. That's that done. You can't do that anymore. Very true, Jimmy. Yeah. Right, that's me. We are we are approaching uh, two and a half, three hours. So that's me. I will see you tomorrow. We should have a longer stream tomorrow. Should be about three hours tomorrow. Um, I'm starting at six o'clock. I'll see you then. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And I'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now.